Well, the horrific case of a young woman in Sudan sentenced to death for killing her abusive husband is raising an outcry inside her country and right across the world. The UN High Commissioner for Human Rights is the latest to appeal for clemency for 19-year-old Noor Hussein. She faces death by hanging after she killed the husband she was forced to marry at age 15. She says she was held down by his relatives as he raped her. Well, sadly, Noor Hussein's plight is not exceptional. In many places, horrible abuse and medieval justice for women remain all too common, even if the charges violate a country's constitution and laws. The global executive director of Equality Now, Yasmin Hassan, says that is the case with Noor in Sudan. Hassan has made a direct appeal to Sudan's president, writing to him, saying in many countries, victims like Noor would be provided services to ensure that they can overcome the trauma of their experiences. Criminalization of Noura for defending herself from assault and in particular a death sentence would violate her rights under the Sudanese constitution as well as international law. Yasmin Hassan joins us now from New York. Uh, good to have you with us. That letter you wrote to the president of Sudan appealing for clemency was signed uh, five days ago, dated May 11th. Have you had a response? We have not yet had a response and we don't expect to get a response because in the past when we have written to presidents, we see certain things changing on the ground and I, so we know that the letter has had an impact. In this particular case, we saw that the Ministry of Justice had opened an inquiry into the case and we were also told that the district attorney who had been absent through the legal proceeding has started appearing and showing an interest in the case. And now today's news is more distressing that the National Security Forces had raided her lawyer's office because while the lawyers were about to do a, a press release on, you know, what their strategy going forward is going to be. Uh, so it's a mixed bag, and I think today's events show us that the international community is more important than ever, as activists there in Sudan are getting threatened and right now don't want to use their names. It certainly is disturbing, as you mentioned, that her uh, lawyers, uh, their press conference was banned today. CNN also has continued to reach out to the Sudanese authority to try and get a response to this and those requests have also been met with silence tell us about the laws under which her case how could you argue this case you say that this case uh, is it, it under you list laws under the Sudanese Constitution that yes. could be used in her case just explain how so one of the cases in Sudan, a girl can be married as soon as she reaches puberty. That's in the law, and her father or a male legal guardian can conclude her marriage contract. But at the same time, the girl's free and full consent is required to the marriage. And here we are saying, first of all, there was no free and full consent, and we are trying to establish that, and I think her lawyers will be making that case also. Uh, so if she was not married under the law, everything that happened in the husband's house when she was held down by two of his brothers and his nephew while he raped her constitutes rape. And the issue of marital rape, which people are in a quandary as to whether marital rape is criminalized in Sudan. The rape law is unclear on this. It doesn't have an exemption for marital rape. But there are other laws in marriage which require a wife to be obedient to a husband and a wife to save herself and preserve herself for her husband, uh, which, you know, are being read to say that a woman's duty is to have sex with the husband and there can be no marital rape. Um, so in any case, if there's no marriage to begin with, the, the rapes that she was suffering, and in particular brutal kind of rapes where people were holding her down, there can be no place for that in a marriage. And when she killed him, it was in self-defense. And we are hoping that the lawyers will have a very strong showing of self-defense in this case. Um, and so all charges against her should be dropped. Uh, what I have learned just by talking to some of the lawyers today is that that's going to be their first argument, hopefully, and the second argument is going to be second-degree murder, which still gets her off the death penalty and has a five to ten-year sentence. Uh, I just want to bring up a quick graphic for our viewers. Sudan relies on a lot of international aid. Uh, you can see there the U.S. by far gives the most, almost $260 million. The EU and U.K. Uh, about $70 million each. Surely these governments have some leverage to use uh, against the Sudanese government uh, to rethink this unjust sentence. What should happen? Absolutely. We are reaching out to all these governments to intervene in this case and do behind-the-scenes political, you know, diplomacy. 
to, um, and we believe that there are talks being held. We know that the UN agencies have reacted already, and the Secretary General is in the process of speaking uh, to the Sudan government. We have reached out to the UK and the US, and we know that there's some efforts being made there. Um, okay. And again, we don't want clemency. I, I know the clemency is a, is, a, uh, is a hard word, because it means she did something wrong and that she should be forgiven for it. We want charges against her to be dropped, because this is not a right use of the law, and she is a victim, not Absolutely. a criminal. Absolutely. Yasmin uh, Hassan, we will stay on this story as well. Thanks so much for your time today. Thank you for having me. We're going to take a short break. We will be right back. Stay with us.